Hello, in this video, we are going to take a look at how to use an AKA nodes VM managed identity to access Azure Data Lake storage that is in the managed resource group of our managed application. So let's recap where we are at based on where the previous video ended. We have a deployment of an Azure managed application with an AKS cluster and VMSS representing its nodes. We will uh, basically connect to one of these VMSS nodes. The VM that is hosting that will have a pod running on it. We'll go into this pod and then we'll gonna make requests to access the storage using the identity managed identity assigned to this VM, not the pod identity in this video, that will be a separate one, but the VM identity without using pod identity. That's number one. And the way we're going to do that is we'll first SSH into the VM, the bootstrap VM. And once we SSH into that VM, we will use its managed identity to connect to the cluster to the AKS cluster to get uh, the right identity assigned on the nodes and we will be able to, to use the node identity. So this is going to be our step one. And then this is going to be our step two for this video. So let's begin. So from the previous uh, video, we deployed a managed application inside of these resource groups. And if we look at the managed resource group, we can see we have a bootstrap VM inside of that resource group. We were going to connect to that bootstrap VM using its SSH um, connection to this public IP. And once we are on that VM, that VM already has an identity assigned to it because that's how our template um, was set up, you can see that it already has an assigned identity and we will use this identity to uh, log in, get the credentials for the AKS cluster. What we are going to use for this walkthrough is we already did this deployment. We will need to do the login, the assigned identities to the VMSS and then get the credentials, start the pod, and start looking at it. So let's begin uh, going through these steps. So number one, we will need the public IP of the VM. So i um, connecting to the VM using the username and the private key. Let's see the connection taking place. Great. So we are on the VM uh, where we try to connect. It doesn't have anything because our template did not deploy any tools on it. We will want to install a Azure CLI on this VM real quick. So install to install the Azure CLI, we'll go to the docs, install Azure CLI. Obviously, this could have been done out of the box in the VM. So we will run this command needs to run as sudo, and this will take it. So our Azure CLI tool is now installed. We can confirm that it's there. And now let's log in using the managed identity. So basically to log in in the CLI, we'll grab our command. We'll paste it here, and we'll make sure to set up the identity properly. So we want to log in using the managed identity that's assigned to the VM. And the identity assigned to the VM is this one. So let's just grab its ID, resource ID, and go into the login and replace this identity U parameter with the identity of the VM. Okay, so we are logged in into the VM now. Um, we can configure that we want results to be in a table, AZ group list, and we should be able to see the groups that this VM can access now. So the, v the CLI on this VM, great. Now we're going to um, go through 
and assign the identity that we want to use later to the VMSS, right? So if we look, why do we need to do that? If we look at the resource group that contains the nodes, let's just open it up right here, and we'll look at the VMSS, we see the identities that got created automatically by um, AKS cluster deployment, but it doesn't have our special identity here. We cannot, uh, unfortunately, at this point, assign that identity at deployment time because um, this class, this VMSS is not yet known to us. So we are going to, to assign it from the bootstrap VM right now using this type of a command, okay? So let's uh, grab this command and do a couple edits to it. So the command would look like this, VMSS identity assign, the resource group where the MSS is, the name of the VMSS, and then the identity that we want to assign to it. So let's see if we can issue this command successfully. It looks like I mistyped uh, this ID over here. Uh, it was missing app in this name. So the error message said we don't have permissions because I was pointing it to the wrong location. But now we are running it and it's the assignment is taking place. Let's go back to the VMSS and check how that looks. So if we look under VMSS, identities, user assigned, right? We see our identity, the one that's in the related resource group, the one that's in the resource group right over here got assigned to this VMSS, okay? So let's see where we are at. So now that the identity is assigned, let's go get credentials from this um, Kubernetes cluster into our Bootstrap VM. This should be the command. Mm. Again, slight typo in the command, an extra in the name. So let's try that again. We got our credentials. Let's make sure we have kubectl. We don't have the kubectl yet. So let's install kubectl on our bootstrap VM. So we download kubectl, make it executable, and we move it to the user bin and now it's able to work. So if we get nodes, we should be able to see our two node cluster running. That's the one we deployed before. And we will start a container on that cluster now uh, to be able to see um, what's there. So let's start interactive container on the cluster using Alpine Linux. So we got our command prompt running. Let's install curl in JQ so that we can make some calls. Great. And now let's explore. Uh, we are inside of a pod. So in the picture here, we are now inside of this pod on this VM that has managed identity attached to it and we use this VM to configure all of that. Now let's see if we can get some information about the VM and the subscription where this pod is running. So as we can see, we can access the instance metadata from inside of the pod, just like that. It's parsed using JQ, but this is the VM on which we are on. Um, we know which scale set it is in, which is the size of the VM, et cetera. So this is the instance metadata. So the documentation for instance metadata is described inside of, of this document, instance metadata right there, all this information. So that's what we are doing requ as request one. We can see that the pod can see its um, metadata of the VM below. Now let's try to get the system assigned manage the identity from the pod. And we expect it to fail. So we are making this request. We're telling it we want the management API um, 
for the instance for the VM. And the reason it will fail is because we don't have a system assigned identity on VMSS. We only assigned user assigned identity. So this request should say identity not found exactly as we see here because we did not specify a specific identity. So how do we get a token for a specific identity? This document describes right here. We can use either client ID or managed identity resource ID. This is actually easier to use and it's predictable because we know the shape of this ID. So in the doc, in this repo, we can take this command and just change it slightly so you can see we're getting the management azure.com identity and we just need the identity id right here where do we get it from where this is the identity for which we want the id the token so we are going to grab its resource id and pass it inside of this parameter and then what we are going to get back from inside of the pod is the access token for accessing the management.azure.com API, which is great. But we want to access storage instead of that. So let's look at, so this is how we could, you know, now we can use this to access ARM APIs with the permissions of this identity, but it's more interesting for us to access storage. So prior to executing the command, we need to grant the storage blob reader role to the relevant identity in the relevant storage account. So let's take a look what we already have this identity, right? Let's see what I, what permissions it has. It already has owner permissions. This may not be enough to do write operations, but let's see if this is enough to do read operations on a data plane or if, because this is control plane owner. But So let's take a look. So copy that command from the repo for getting the access token. Let's swap out this identity to put the correct one right over here, okay? Then we are going to make sure that we, instead of grabbing as before, we were grabbing managementazure.com, now we're going to be grabbing token for accessing storage. And we're going to be parsing it to extract the access token and putting it in the environment variable. So let, let's just see what this looks like. we can see we got the access token and hopefully this is the correct one. And now we will try to see if it fails, it's likely because the owner is not enough. So list files and directories. So let's construct the curl request for that. We're gonna take the authorization, bare header, we'll pass the token we got, and we're gonna point this to the folder one that we created already. Uh, I created already before uh, we got in a call inside of the storage account. So right here is folder one. And inside of folder one, I put in a file. So imagine there is a storage account already defined. It's this one right here. The customer may not be able to necessarily see uh, what's there because the customer does not have uh, access to get the keys, but we are running as a managed identity that does have owner permission. So let's see how how that looks. If this request will succeed or it will fail, we just need to point it to the right storage account. So this is going to be the storage account name. And let's see what we get back from inside of the pod. So we can see uh, as expected, that this request is not authorized to perform this operation, even though we have a token and this identity has owner permission, that owner permission is in the control plane, not on the data plane, and we need data plane permissions to be able to make these calls. So let's go back to the storage account. And double check what permissions we have here. So you have the owner and this identity. And if we try to add permissions as a customer, this will fail because this resource group does not have 
permissions for the customer to do anything. So let, let's just try this out. So I'm in the customer. I'm going to say, I want to make this storage data reader, blob data reader, and I'm going to pick my managed identity of AMA AKS3 identity and say save. And you can see I cannot save this identity change because I'm this is a managed application and I have denied permission as a customer. If we go on the other hand as the publisher to the application, what will be the problem assigning this permission? The problem assigning this permission, so we go to the managed resource group, access control, add, role assignment. And the challenge here will be we can see the storage data reader. But we do not see the identity here because the identity, the managed identity lives in the tenant of the end customer. So at this point, what we see is we are able to get the access token, but we are not able to make requests because this access token is for identity that doesn't have permissions. And we kind of seem to be stuck here in assigning the cross-tenant permissions. From the customer side, we cannot assign the permissions even though we see the identity because this resource group is locked. And from the publisher perspective, we cannot assign the identity because what is showing in the UI here are identities that the, cost, that the publisher knows about, the publisher account right here. This directory does not know about the identity we are trying to find. So we seem to be stuck. So how can we assign these permissions? There are two ways. One way is the same one we used when we were deploying the template. So one way is in the template itself, we were assigning these cross-tenant permissions. We could have simply added an assignment to the storage account for the identity. And at deployment time, this would have worked. That's what we did for some of these other identities. But I left on purpose this example out to show how to do the assignment after the fact from publisher perspective. So again, if we wanted it at deployment time, we would have simply needed to add a role assignment similar to this one right here. But instead of just assigning it owner permission, we would assign the storage account uh, data reader with this type of a nested template. And then the deployment time applica uh, uh, managed application resource provider would have done the assignment. However, because we didn't do that, now we kind of are stuck and we cannot assign it from the UI and we cannot assign it from either side of the customer or the publisher. Uh, and we will take a look in the next video at how to do this assignment using an ARM template workaround. Thank you for watching. And next video, we'll talk about us doing this assignment.